So for today's webinar, we're going to be talking about project intake with Power Apps. Power Apps is something that you may be familiar with. It was introduced, oh, it's been out for about two years now, I believe, uh, with Flow. So if you don't know anything about it, you've come to the right session. We'd love to share this information with you and get you in here and get you started. My name is Laura Crawford, and I'll be your facilitator for today. Our agenda, we're going to start with some brief introductions, tell you a little bit about me, a little bit about PPM Works. Then we're going to jump into what are Power Apps. From there, I'll get you started using Power Apps. We'll create a new Power App from scratch, from also a template. And we're also, I'll be providing a demonstration of how to do all this while we're, while we're going through today's webinar. And then also we're going to give you at the end some ideas and examples of different Power Apps that you can create for your own organization. We always end at the um, with a Q&A. Feel free to type in the um, chat window. If you do have any questions, um, you can please um, go ahead, feel free to type those questions in there. As I'm demonstrating those, sometimes I don't get to see those depending upon uh, my presentation screen here. I do have my second monitor open, but I promise that at the end, I will go back and review all the questions and do my best to answer them. If there's something I need to follow up on, um, again, you can um, give me your contact info and I'd be happy to uh, research any additional questions that you might have as well. All right, so a little bit about myself. My name is Laura Crawford. I am a senior PPM specialist here at PPM Works. I am a Microsoft certified trainer and I'm also a Microsoft specialist. So I've taken the project 2013 exam for projects and portfolio with Project Server. I've also taken the 2010 exams, um, the 2007 exams as well. So my certifications go all the way back to 2007. Um, I knew we do live, eat and breathe in this tool. So we use this to run our business. So we um, are very familiar with how to use Project Online and Project Server. So um, I do fill out a timesheet every week. I do manage projects in Project Online. So um, feel free to ask us any questions after today if you have them. All right, so a little bit about PPM Works. We are a gold certified partner. We're very proud of that. Um, in order to achieve that, uh, not only do I sit for those certification exams, but everyone on my team as well. So we're, um, we have a very well qualified team of individuals. In addition to that, uh, Microsoft does reach out to our clients and customers to ask them how we're doing. Um, are we worthy of that gold status? And our clients do um, back us up. As you can see, uh, that's why we are gold certified. So awesome to have that um, to have that level of partnership with Microsoft. You'll see a small sampling of some of our customers down below. Um, these just happen to be pharma companies, medical device, and healthcare. So, but we um, reach across all um, organizations and all business areas. Uh, we guarantee our results. We are project experts. So if you've sat for any of those certification exams that I just mentioned, we are usually, we have been asked by Microsoft for the last three exam cycles to help prepare those exam questions. So very involved in that as well. And we also have extensive experience. We have over 250 implementations. Um, I alone have trained thousands of um, individuals. So we have a wealth of knowledge that we bring there. Uh, this just gives you a little bit of a background on our consulting services. Um, we provide a full range of consulting services. So if you're looking to implement project online for the first time, we can help you do that. If you're looking to migrate from an earlier version, let's say Project Server 2010, we can certainly assist you in that as well. Um, maybe you already have Project Online and folks need to be trained. You haven't rolled that out yet. Or maybe you just need some administrative help. Maybe you need some staff augmentation or just a small contract where you can get on a Teams meeting with us and ask us and pick our brain with any current um, problems that you might be experiencing. We also do integration. So if you're looking to integrate the tool with SAP, uh, JIRA, Meisterplan, for example, um, we can certainly do that as well. All right, so some of our learning objectives for today. By the end of the session, you're going to be able to define Power Apps. You're going to be able to successfully log in so that you can begin using them. We're also going to create Power Apps from a template 
or from scratch. So you'll be able to do all these after today. So let's talk for a moment about what Power Apps are. All right, so Power Apps, it's a suite of app services and connectors, um, all built on a data platform that provides uh, users with a rapid application development environment. All right, so it is a set of cloud-based software services. It allows users to quickly build custom business apps for mobile and web. Um, I want to stress the mobile in this because what you're going to see is um, these apps are designed for use on your smartphone or on a tablet. So if you have um, people in your organization that are out in the field, maybe they're updating a service request or something along those lines, they can easily and quickly do that from their phone. So you'll, you'll be able to see that and I'll give you some screenshots and what those look like as well. But that this Power Apps is designed um, to be able to use these on mobile devices. Um, it also connects to many data sources. So Project Online, SharePoint, Excel, Office 365, Dynamics, OneNote, and also non-Microsoft sources. So you can connect to um, Dropbox, you can connect to um, SAP, other non-Microsoft sources as well. So Microsoft has recognized that your data sources may or may not be be on another Microsoft application or tool. So these um, apps are able to connect to many different data sources, making them very, um, very easy to use. And also, um, it's a development platform for non-developers. I can't stress that enough because um, I, while I am well-versed in configuring Project Server and, and SharePoint, and there's quite a bit that I can do within the tool, I am not a developer by any means, so I do not write code. Um, there is no code needed for developing Power Apps, which also makes this very user friendly um, so that you can get in here and get started. So that is one of the biggest um, points to, to make here, that it is um, a development platform for non-developers. So let's talk a little bit about the Power App components. Um, we are going to dive into the tool in just a moment, but let's cover the basics here. So one of the first things um, you'll see, there's two components that I've gone ahead and bolded here. One is Web Power Apps and Power App Studio. All right, so Web Power Apps is your online design, design environment, and it is accessed from this URL here, so it's web.powerapps.com. So again, it's an online design environment where you'll be working. From here, you can create, manage, and share your apps. The Power App Studio is a desktop application, and it's a virtual design application. So this is where you're going to, um, you can also continue to design your Power Apps. Now you'll see here that there's also Power Apps for admins and Power Apps for developers. And the reason why I don't have these bolded is we're not going to be covering these two components today. Um, they are worth mentioning, um, but Power Apps for admins really is focusing on those administrators that want to get in there um, and manage the environment. They want to look at users' roles, data loss prevention, um, and set different policies. All right, so that's what the Power Apps Admin Center um, allows the administrators to do. And also there's a Power Platform Admin Center for support. Now, Power Apps for Developers. Now, if you are a developer and you can code, um, this is what you, you, you can use this component to develop much more complex Power Apps. But for today's session, we're just going to take a look at Web Power Apps and the Power App Studio. Okay, so when we're getting ready to, to uh, sign in and start using and creating our Power Apps, there are some things that you're going to want to do in advance, all right? Um, for one thing, keep in mind that we are going to be connecting to data, all right? So you're going to need to make sure that that data exists somewhere where other users that are consuming or using your app that you're building can connect to. All right, so you'll see here that um, if, they, if it's a SharePoint list that they'll be updating or an Excel workbook, which they will be updating, you're going to need to create those in advance. 
All right, and also if it's an Excel workbook, you will have to format as a format it as a table. So take the time to take your worksheet, um, your workbook, and format format it as a table. All right, now um, once it's formatted as a table, sometimes people ask the question, well. How many rows can I have in a table? What's my limitation? Um, you can have up to 100,000 rows. So I don't think you'll exceed that um, limitation there, but you're gonna wanna create that SharePoint list or that Excel workbook prior to building your app. Now, once you've done that, you're also going to make sure that these two, um, either this list or workbook, um, or document or whatever you whatever you're using whatever your data source is that it's actually uploaded to um, a place where other users can access it so in other words you have an excel workbook somewhere um, don't store it locally um, in a in your own documents on your laptop all right because first of all that makes the excel workbook static um, and also others will not have access to it the apps that we're going to be looking at today are designed to enhance or update your existing list or workbooks um, they will not go out and create a new list or create a workbook for you. So those have to have been created in advance. And then again, they have to be um, in, an, in an area where other users can access them. So when they're using the app and they hit submit or they enter information, that that information then gets um, stored in that SharePoint list or that Excel workbook. All right, we also recommend that you use OneNote for business. All right, and one of the reasons is because um, you do need to have um, OneNote for business. Uh, you want users to be able to access that OneNote. Again, um, we typically use SharePoint. So all of my uh, documents or libraries and lists are usually shared in SharePoint. I do use OneNote though, um, that is synced with my SharePoint sites as well. Um, but that is your preference, but you're gonna need to make sure that those lists exist in advance. All right, so getting started with Power Apps. This is where we're gonna jump into in just a moment, but this is the website. So you can open a new browser, start typing in powerapps.microsoft.com, and it'll bring you to this page here. Um, this page is a recent screenshot that I just took within the past few days. Um, that's because remember that um, Microsoft has this evergreen environment, um, so they're constantly updating all their applications and when those application updates are rolled out, uh, you see those changes. Um, so this can change in other words. So if you're looking and reviewing this webinar um, that was done back in April of 2019 and here it is November of 2019, this may look a little bit different. So keep that in mind. And one of the other things that I'll also point out is that you're going to need, um, um, if you try and sign up and you're not able to um, sign up or obtain the license for Power Apps, you may need to speak to your administrator, all right? So you may have a policy in place that does not allow you to um, request the licensing of the application. So if that is the case, you'll need to speak to your Office 365 portal administrator. Um, the other thing too is that you're going to need an Office 365 email address. You cannot use Gmail Yahoo or Hotmail. So if this is something that you just want to test out and give um, a dry run to, go ahead and use your Office 365 email account. If by chance you do not have one, you can request a trial. All right, so you can sign up for an Office 365 trial and then you can use that to um, test out these applications. All right, I'm gonna take you through a couple of screenshots only because I've already um, signed up, so you're not gonna see this when I, when I go into the tool in just a moment. But I put in my Office 365 email address. Um, sometimes you're prompted about your country and your origin. Um, let me also jump ahead a few screenshots. Yes, you're also going to have to grant permission. You'll be prompted um, that uh, Power Apps needs to access Office 365 users, Planner, um, Outlook and OneNote. All right, so you'll need to allow this so that 
you can um, begin using the tool. All right, so I'm going to end my slideshow here in just a moment. All right, so let me go ahead and show you an example or get you started using the Power Apps. So I do have my browser open. So this is the screenshot that we were just looking at. I wanna point out a few things. You'll see Get Started Free, and you'll also see Sign Up Free here as well. All right, so again, this is a free application that you can use. I do wanna point out real quick though that there are other pricing options or licenses available. All right, so you'll see there's a plan one and a plan two, but up here again is your free trial here. All right, so you can um, try out um, either of these subscri subscription models here for plan one or plan two, but quite honestly, um, for what we're gonna be doing today, you do not need that, all right? so. You can sign up for free to get started. So that's what we, um, I recommend. So you're gonna click the go ahead and get started, and then it's gonna walk you through um, those screens that we've already seen. It, for me, it'll just prompt me that I already have it. So again, go ahead and click on get started for free. Go ahead and put in your Office 365 email address, and then just go navigate through those prompts right there. So it's as simple as that. All right, so let me go ahead and show you some examples here that we've created. So as the webinar said, you can automate your um, project intake using Power Apps. So I'm gonna show you how we've done that here in our environment. This is my demo environment here. And what I'd like to start out by showing you is we do have what's called an idea, an idea list. And this list is used to capture all um, project ideas, all right? So for demand management, maybe we want to track um, uh, projects that we have, um, we're not sure if they're going to become a project, but we'd like to um, uh, track them at any rate. So let me go ahead and sign in. And in a moment, it's gonna bring me to my ideas list. So how we use this is anytime someone has a project idea, they can submit it here. Um, then instead of creating a brand new project in Project Center, and this is a demo environment, but if your organization was gonna to, going to implement something like that, you can see that there's different fields that we've created. So you can create anything that mimics your own project intake form or business charter, if you will. So all of those fields can be added to this. This is a SharePoint list that's very easy to customize and update. Um, maybe the organization then comes through here weekly. Uh, the powers that be or your PMO sits down and says, okay, these are the projects that are, these are the ideas that are make the cut. They're worthy of becoming a project. So from here, you can actually um, take this idea on a list and I'll show you this actually really quick. I'm in a modern view. I'm going to switch to a classic SharePoint view so I can show you how I can take an item on this list and I can actually create a project from it. So maybe again, once a week, your organization comes through here, they review all these brand new requests and when they're ready, they go ahead and create, take it from a request and create a project from here. This is a pretty cool idea if you're not using it already. Um, this is actually a default option or feature that's available on all SharePoint lists. So you can, again, as I said, configure these so that these fields match your current project intake process. Um, you can have drop down values, of course, that's what these are, et cetera. All right, so you get the idea. We're starting from this idea list and then we can create a project from here. Um, but what I wanna show you is, and I'm gonna go back to my other view real quick, my modern view. This is the classic experience of SharePoint. Project Online now has switched to what they call the modern view. But I wanted to go back to modern view because you'll see that I have an option right here to create a flow or also to create a power app. All right, so I can actually do that right from here. But let me go ahead and select this new button so you can see um, what our power app looks like here. So you can see that when I select this, I have a form that opens up for me here and I can enter my project idea name. I can also look for um, the department 
All right, and these are mimicking the fields that you see here as well. So I actually can come in here and create or add or update this list from here. So what's great about this though is remember that if I'm out in the field or maybe I just came out of a meeting with a client or a customer and I have all this information in my head and I don't wanna wait until I get back into the office where I'm gonna be distracted by emails, additional meetings, etc. So I can actually, if I download the app that I've created on my phone, I can open up my phone and I would see um, this um, form right on my phone and I can come in here and I can start updating this information. And once I've gone ahead and done that um, and saved it, that information would then be present here on this list. So again, I can be out in the field, maybe it's a service request or something like that. You have folks that are out on service calls, they wanna take a photograph of something, they wanna add that attachment, they wanna update it while they're out in the field, while they're there, before they even pull out of the parking lot, they can do that, all right? So Power Apps gives you that ability to automate or um, quickly um, enhance some of the features that you may already be using in Project Online. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. I'm gonna show you how you can actually do, create a Power App directly from the list. So I'll show you here and then I'll take you into Power Apps as well and we'll, we'll start from there as well. So if I click on this drop down, you'll see I have two um, options. I can create a new app or I can customize a form if I wanted to. So I could, if I wanted to, go into an existing form and update that and, and customize, customize it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an app here. All right, and the first thing it's gonna ask me for is a name. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna say demo power app. Or actually, no, let me do, let me do something that's related to this list, ideas. Um, ideas demo, I'll do that. As you can see, I already have an app that has that name, so it's telling me that. So I'll go ahead and select create. And now it's bringing me to the Power Apps screen, and you'll see that I'm prompted to sign in again, so I'll have to do that. And then once I've signed in, I do wanna make sure that I am connected to the correct environment. So if you have multiple customers or clients, you wanna make sure that you are connected to the correct one. It is defaulting to my PPM Works Incorporated default, and now it's starting to build my app. So in the background, it's going through all these steps building the app, and you'll see in a moment, it's going to pre-populate with the items from the list. All right, so it didn't ask me any questions. The only question that it did ask me was to name my app. So I've gone ahead and I've done that. So it's still building it. You can see all the information become, being populated in the background. And it's saving it to Power Apps. So now I have my new ideas demo Power App created. All right, so you do have some, um, there are some self-tutoring or self-training um, uh, that you can go through. So you can see a preview of it if you want to. I'm gonna skip that because in the interest of time, all right, but you can certainly go through those, all right? So you have the ability of clicking through all of those there. So what it did is um, it gave me uh, a form right here, a mobile view of what my app is going to look like. So it didn't ask me any questions. So what I'll do is I'm going to click on the outline of my app so that I can highlight the entire gallery because I want what I want to show you though is that each of these have different cards, if you will, in here. So each of these is called a card. All right, and you'll see here that I have um, the name, I have um, a submissions um, type, and then this is the date a st a start field here. It did not ask me what I wanted in these fields. All it did was ask me uh, the name of the app. So you don't get to initially um, select which fields are here. It's going to take um, the, the designers of Power App or the developers of Power App made an assumption on what should be um, included here, but you can um, change this, all right? So you can certainly do that. So you'll see here, if I highlight the entire card, um, there are three screens here. 
We have the browse screen, collapse that. You also have what's called a detail screen, which will drill down into a specific project idea, giving you additional details. And then you also have what's called an edit screen. And then this is the screen that the end user is using to update um, information. All right, so let me go back to my browse screen here. And let me go ahead and highlight this. All right, and you'll see that I do have a layout over here. All right, and if I select this drop down, it's giving me the title, subtitle, and, and body. If I just want the title, which would be the name of the project idea, I, I could change that here. I do need to click away and you'll see that it then changes. Um, but again, if I wanted some additional detail in this browse screen that at least lets me know the name of the project, maybe the department, and then also the start date, I can see that information in here as well. All right, so you'll also see that there is a fields, um, an edit button for fields. And now this is where you can come in and change. So you'll see that we have start date, we have project departments, and we also have the name. So you can certainly come in here and if you didn't wanna see project start dates and maybe you wanted to see sponsor instead or something along those lines, you can actually select a different um, field for here. You're, you're not, um, you'll see how I can come in here, I could select owner if I wanted to. Um, I can put in a description if I didn't think it was going to be too lengthy. Um, I can say um, project priority. Maybe I want to see the priority of it, who the requester is. Um, I can go ahead and change it from requester. You'll see how this dynamically changed then. So whatever you want to see here, um, you know, again, it took the, the developers took a stab of what you might want to see here. Um, but all I did was I clicked on the fields and then I clicked on edit and it's giving me the option of changing these three fields that we see here. All right, so pretty easy to do so far, right? I didn't have to type in any sort of formula. I did not have to do any um, coding or any kind of JavaScript or anything like that. So I, it really is just, it's gonna create the app for you and then you can walk through and determine how this looks here. All right, so that's your browse screen. Um, I also could um, change my width, my layout, if I wanted to change the color of my font or any um, visual background color, I can certainly do that as well. All right, I could also insert images in here if I wanted to as well. All right, and that is my browse screen. Uh, my detail screen, this is the, um, when you drill down into a specific um, project idea, what information is being presented there. And again, this pulls from that list. So that's why it's important that that list is created first. All right, and then this is where the individual would be entering this information. All right, so if I go ahead and select my card here, let's see if I can span this real quick. All right, so if I want to edit my form, this is where I can, again, I can edit fields from here. So you'll see how I can um, add additional fields. So if I add a new field to my list, I can come back in here. I can update this Power App. I need to remember to save it and then publish it. So those um, updates are pushed out. Um, but I also can, if I um, select um, the name here, there's also an ellipse. So if I decide at some point that this is something that I don't need any longer, I could remove it from here. Obviously name, probably not one I would want to remove, but maybe departments, maybe we're no longer using departments. I could come in here and I can actually um, come in here and remove that field from this form. I can also change the order by moving these up and down. All right, and I also can, you'll see that this is set to be required. I can change that if I needed to. You'll note that I can't, um, I can't change it from here, but I do have the ability of going into advanced here where you'll see, I come down here. 
This is where my fill, if you know your RG, um, RGB colors, you can put that in there as well. Oh, sorry, my screen's freezing up a little bit. Hmm. All right, well, I'm looking for where I can change um, required from uh, false to true, and that would be how I could change my idea to be required as well. So let me try and cancel out of here and see if this is gonna work for me. All right, okay. So again, you can um, select the entire card, but then you can also come in and select the individual fields. Um, and um, continue editing this. So it's gonna take a stab of what you want to see in here. But again, um, there may be fields in here that you wanna remove, or as you create or update your list, there may be some that you want to actually add in here as well. And this is the edit form. So this is what the end user would be seeing when they're out there creating that. Okay, so just wanna pause for a moment. So let's go back to where we started here. So what I start, how I started was from a simple list. So I was in my project center. From here, I went to my idea list, or it could be any SharePoint list. And you'll see that I began creating my Power App from right here. Now there are other ways to create Power Apps and I'm gonna go ahead and show you those as well. So if I'm not in a list right now, I could also go to what we call the App Launcher. Some people call it a waffle because it does resemble a waffle. And if I select all apps, you'll see that I can scroll down and locate Power Apps here. All right, so I can select Power Apps from here. It's going to open up my Power App screen. I got it prompted to log in. So I wanna go ahead and log in. You'll see the bubbles from time to time. That's just letting you know, that's the uh, hourglass, letting you know to take your time and wait a moment while we're getting the information ready for you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this screen. So if you're starting from here, um, let's point out a few things. You'll see that there is an environment. It is defaulting to my environment, PPM Works Incorporated. If I was creating a Power App for one of my customers, I would actually change that. So that's where I would change it here. So just so that you know that that is there. You have your home screen here where I can start creating my own app. You'll see that there's a Canvas app, there's a model-driven app, and then there's an opportunity to start from data. So some of you may be wondering what the difference is between uh, these two. And that's actually a good question there. So the Canvas apps, provide the most flexibility from a user interface. They're very easy to use. They're also, um, you would want to use them if you, in thinking about the person that is going to be consuming the app and using it for non-technical people, you're gonna wanna use a Canvas app, all right? It's very easy to build your app from any of the tools where your data lives. As I showed you, I can build the app directly from a SharePoint list. I could also build it from a Power BI dashboard if I wanted to as well. All right, so your Canvas app, um, it's used mostly for your web and mobile, uh, your mobile tablets, et cetera. So it's very easy to use, all right? Um, and you can connect to many data sources. So as I already mentioned, um, you can connect to SharePoint, you can connect to Dropbox, you can connect to Microsoft Dynamics, um, sales um, force, you name it. There's, there's other opportunities or data um, connections that you can establish, establish outside of Microsoft as well, um, but that would be using the Canvas app. Your model-driven app are different in that um, it uses the app designer, but it's 
also um, good for creating a data source from scratch. So you're not connecting to an existing data source. Um, it's also good for business process flow. So if you want to take someone from beginning to end through your process, um, the model-driven apps work well for that. They do not connect to multiple data sources like the Canvas app, they do only connect to a common data service. All right, um, common data service is, an example would be Azure. All right, so it only connects to that one common data source. It does not connect to multiple sources, again, like SharePoint, Excel, Dropbox, OneNote, et cetera. All right, um, these are the easiest to use and get started. Neither one um, requires uh, coding, um, so, but the Canvas app from blank is going to be the easier one to get started in here. All right, so let me point out learn because you'll see that there is guided learning and help topics. So if you're getting started and you want to take one of these interactive tours, um, this is where you can come in. Apps should show me my existing apps that we have in here. So you can see the one that I just created is listed there. We do have some other examples that I'll talk to in just a moment. Um, we created one that I'll share with you later for support requests. We also have one that is for a tablet or a phone where you can update your tasks from your phone. So if you want to mark your tasks and projects as complete, it syncs with those um, projects and you can go ahead and update that information if you wanted to. All right, so let's come back up to the home page again and let's go ahead and create a Canvas app from blank. So again, the first thing I need to do is give it a, um, a name. I'm going to do support, support questions. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to make it for my phone. I'm going to connect to a different list from the one we were just looking at. So I'm going to connect, I'm going to use, um, the format should be for my phone. So what that um, makes the assumption is that it'll be a vertical and not a landscape um, format there. All right, so I'll go ahead and create this. It's going to start creating my application for me. I got to sign into my account again. And it's going to let me, it's going to get things started and ready for me in a moment. You'll see everything loading in the background. Now, again, these are um, tutorials that are here to help you. So I'm going to skip this, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. But you'll see that it's going to ask me to connect to data. So I need to connect this application to data. So now it's going to ask me where I want to connect to. So if I had um, tasks in planner and I wanted to create an app that I can update my planner tasks, I can do that from here. Um, but I'm actually going to go to SharePoint again. All right. So I'm going to wait for this to load. So I'm going to connect to my demo environment here. And now because I am looking, um, connecting to SharePoint, it's going to populate those um, SharePoint lists that I already have built. So let me go over here and scroll down. And I'm gonna select my support list and I'm gonna connect to here. All right. Let's see if it's going to do that for me again. Let's try that one more time. All right, I'm going to connect to my demo environment and I'm going to look for my support here and I'm going to connect. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this one here. I 
All right, come on, let's go. All right, so what it should be doing is connecting to my support list and then it's going to pre-populate my app with some of the fields from that support list. So let me go ahead and show you what the one looks like that we've already built in here. I'll show you that one in a minute. Let me go back to, I'm gonna navigate away from here for a moment if it allows me to. Let me go ahead and save this guy while we're talking about that. So let me save before I navigate away from here. If I forget to save this new app that I'm creating, it will, I'll lose all my work. So I need to go ahead and save this. And the other thing that I also have to um, let you know about is um, publishing the app as well so that others can use it. So I can publish this version. And now I can share it, all right? So when you create a new app, it's only visible to you at first, so you need to share the app, all right? So if I go ahead and open this up, it'll give me the opportunity to share. So right now it's only shared with me, all right? So I need to enter an email address. So if I wanted to share this with Jacques, I could do that. I could also share this with my entire delivery team. Let's see if I have delivery in here. Oops, if I can spell. All right, so I don't have my delivery team, but I can certainly share this with Jacques. And I can also share this uh, with other users on my team. Once I've gone and done that, um, this app will be available for those users. They can see it here in, um, in uh, Power Apps. They also can download the app to their phone as well. So if it's a mobile application, they're gonna wanna go into, um, I happen to have an iPhone, so I would go into the app store, I would look for my app, and then I would download it to my phone. So I can certainly, um, I need to share it though. Otherwise, it's only there for me, all right? Okay, so let me go back here. Let me close that for a moment. And then I'll get back to my um, canvas from blank in a moment, but let's take a look at the templates here. So if I select templates, you'll see that there's some that are already built here. So there's a lot of really cool templates in here. Power apps, training for office, meeting capture is really neat. Um, I poked around in this one. This is if you want to take notes from your meeting, you can actually upload images or draw um, if you needed to. Um, it also sends an email out as well afterwards. So great for capturing um, meeting notes. Um, Power Apps Training, haven't used that one just yet, um, but you'll see here you can click on any of these and it'll give you a nice um, explanation. So this is if you were doing some low-key training and you wanted to reinforce knowledge check, you can certainly create those Power Apps for training to make sure that everyone on your team is doing some uh, self-serving for training if they needed to. Um, help Desk is a good one as well. You'll see there's service decks, site inspection. So there's lots of different um, ones to choose from. There's a to-do list as well. The to-do list connects to Wonderlust. So if you have that application and you're using it, all right, opportunity tracking. So if you're tracking sales opportunities, that would be a good one for you. So you can see how you can select one of these. I'll go up to meeting capture here and I can give it a new name. So let's say meeting notes. And you'll see that it's going to connect to all these applications here. And I can go ahead and click on create. That's gonna prompt me to sign in again. And it's going to go ahead and load my template for me. All right, so the template is predefined. 
Um, you can make it your own though. So you can go in just like when we were looking at the application that's pre-designed for you. Um, this is the prompt where you'll need to allow. So you're going to want to see that you have um, your that you are signed into the correct account. So if you are signed into somebody else's account um, for another customer, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right, right one. You're going to switch those. So you have to go ahead and give it that permission. It's going to go ahead and load now. And it's going to give you the template for the application. All right. So from here, you can um, either take the template as is and start using it. Or again, you can um, make it your own, all right? There are these tutorials that will pop up. If you don't like these, if this is, if you rather just explore on your own, you can say, don't show me this again, and click on skip, and you will not be prompted. All right, so you'll see here that there's a whole bunch of um, different screens that have been in here. All right, and um, you can see that I do have a webinar on here. So I can start my meeting, I can get in here, and I can start taking my notes from within here. All right, so let me show you though from here in advanced, if we wanted to go back to my properties here. So you'll have different, um, you can always, uh, change your images or your positioning if you needed to. Um, you can hide things as well. So all of these are easy to change. So you can change the color of everything. You can insert a logo if you needed to. You can brand it, in other words, to make it your own. All right, so this is your um, welcome screen here. All right, you also have a home screen. Well, you'll see it'll have a list of the attendees, any notes that you're taking. You can actually create a planner task right from your meeting. So if it's an action item that you want to assign to someone, you can do that right from here. So this is a pretty cool application. There's a sketch screen. So this is where I was saying how you can actually draw on here if you wanted to. I happen to have a touchstone screen. So that's pretty nice. I can use my um, stylus pen if I needed to, or my finger to draw something. Or I could also upload an image from my camera, which makes these um, apps great also is that because you can use your mobile phone, you also have access to your camera on your phone. Um, also your GPS on your phone if needed as well. So those are just some of the added bonuses of being able to use these um, in mobile um, applications. All right, so again, this is just starting from a template. There's lots of templates for you to choose from. So once you have developed your app and you've gone through and you've done some changes in here, you're going to want to remember to save Okay, so you can save this. You'll see that there is an icon here um, that you can change. So if you wanted to change your icon, this is where you would do it. So you can scroll through here. Um, if it makes more sense to do, let's see. Oh, it looks kind of cool. So you'll see how that one changes. I could also change my color. If I needed to, I've already given my app a name, but I can go ahead and save it. So any of the edits that I make will then be saved. All right, I also want to remember to share my app when it's ready. So I can come in here, I can keep building it, saving it, etc. So I do wanna save it to the cloud, to my Power Apps, um, so that others are able to use it as well. All right, let me show you one more example of what we've done. And keeps opening up different windows there. So let's see, let me go back here. All right, let me go to my Power Apps again. And I wanna show you two other examples. Whoops, went too far, there we go. So let me open up this. I wanna show you the support one that I was just trying to build from scratch. So support requests, let me open this up for you. So again, if you're out and about or 
you're out of the office and you're struggling to do something, this is an example of what a support request could look like. So you want to, um, you have an access or permission um, issues. You can describe that. You can go ahead and prioritize it. And once you've completed all this information from your phone, this information then gets updated into a list, all right? And then whoever's responsible um, would get an alert or a reminder that something new has been added to that list. They can then go in and see your support questions. So that is one. I wanted to show you one more. Let me present my slide deck. And I'll show you this next one. And then, oops, sorry, I'm just going to. So I've gone through and put in the steps here you need to see those. All right, so this is an example of a task update app that we've created. So if I was on my phone, you would see that I'm able to update um, different individual task progress. I can show them as completed, et cetera, and then submit those. And then what that does is it updates the task project in my project plan as well. So very easy to use, very um, useful. Um, you could use it from a mobile device or from a phone. Uh, this is the example of that support question as well. So different ideas that you can um, use. So again, um, these are relatively easy to create. You can create them directly from a SharePoint list like I showed you. You can create them from a template as well. And then you can go in and modify the existing template to change it, to make it your own. All right, so I just wanna let you know about a few upcoming events. Um, we do have our spring demo series, uh, April 16th. That's Project Online versus Project Server. We all, the next one after that will be April 23rd, everything you wanna know about portfolio management, and then tips for maintaining project by project, security and Power BI. All right, so after today's session, if you wanted to um, view the recording, I'm not sure if you subscribe to our PPM Works YouTube channel, um, but please do that. If you are unsure of how to get there, um, you can email us at info at ppmworks.com. Also, go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn or our company as well. And um, visit our site regularly. Subscribe to our blogs. Um, and then this way you can register for additional upcoming events. This video will be um, on our YouTube channel shortly. I'm not sure what the timing is on that. But we would love for you to um, subscribe so you have access to our other webinars as well. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm also gonna stop the recording. And then this way, if there are any questions, um, sometimes people are shy. So I'm gonna stop the recording and I'll take a look at those questions and start answering those. But I want to thank you for those of you that may not have questions and need to drop. Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you back again sometime soon. Thank you.